Got another question on the electoral potentials topic. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so the cell diagram to start with, so we're putting the nickel, nickel 2 plus half cell against the Fe3 plus 2 plus. So two beakers with solutions in, uh, connected by a salt bridge. Must make sure that your salt bridge dips into the uh, solutions. So in the nickel uh, half cell, and it doesn't matter which way around you put these by the way. So in the nickel half cell, we've got a solid nickel electrode dipping into a one mole per decimeter cubed solution of nickel two plus ions. Obviously that's gonna be connected via a wire through a voltmeter to a platinum electrode in the iron three, iron two half cell. And we need to say that we've got one mole per decimeter cubed solutions of Fe3 plus and one mole per decimeter cubed solutions of Fe2 plus. Part two, to work out the standard cell potential, we take the most positive standard electrode potential and subtract the least from it. So for cell A, which is based on systems one and two, it will be 0 0.77 minus minus 0 0.25, which gives a voltage of 1.02. And the most positive electrode potential is the positive electrode. You'll see that nickel had the least positive of the two electrode potentials and so it is the negative electrode. Cell B, based on systems one and three, so it's most positive minus least positive for the um, cell potential. So that's minus 0 0.25 minus minus 0 0.74, which gives 0 0.49 as a cell voltage. And again, the most positive standard electrode potential is the positive electrode and this time nickel is the positive electrode. Part B, we've got to back up with equations, these statements here. So in cell A, the nickel electrode lost mass. So cell A is based on um, processes one and two. So if we look at the standard electrode potentials, that's more positive than that. So this runs in the forwards direction, which means this runs in the reverse direction. You can see nickels become a nickel two plus, so it's gonna lose mass. The overall equation obviously is based on combining those two processes, that one forwards, that one reverse, but we'd have to double the I in one because of the electrons only being one, whereas there's two there. Cell B based on one and three, so look at the numbers. So you can see this is more positive than this one. So this runs in the forwards direction. This runs in reverse. Um, in terms of electrons, we need to treble this one and double this one. So that gives us this equation here, and you can see that we are forming nickel in this reaction, so it's going to gain mass. And finally, in both cells, the cell potential slowly changes, and that's because the concentrations change. These voltages are only based on standard conditions, so that's one mole per decimeter cubed solutions. As soon as the cell operates, the concentrations of the solutions are going to change, which means that the voltages change. And finally, part C, you can see I've highlighted um, the things that we've already got in the final equation or the overall equation from the half equation given. So you can see we haven't got MH or M, so we definitely need those in, that, in this half equation. So MH going to M. And basically what's got to happen is the two half equations, so the one we're creating and the one we're given, they've got to add together to give the overall equation. So you can see we need to get rid of H2O and an electron. So we're going to put them on that side. And we need that OH- minus to disappear, so it needs to go on this side. And finally, the other method, other than absorption for hydrogen, is to store it as a liquid under high pressure. 